Today, I want to bring a new perspective on the electrical revolution on the automotive industry. In recent years, we have made a big leap in this field. We began the transition from petrol to electric. Everybody knows the benefit of this transition, but not everyone is willing to accept it. It is a field full of arguments and bias. People come up with all sorts of reasons to fight against electric cars. They say the range is too short, the charging time is too long, they don't have the character to drive. Well, in my opinion, those arguments are neither necessary or correct. It is easy to see that all those arguments involve some sort of comparison between the petrol and the electric. I think the petrol car and the electric car are two completely different species and cannot be compared. If we stop comparing, a lot of the arguments will disappear and the whole topic will be made into a much more subjective one. Now, a lot of people don't see the difference between the petrol car or the electric because they do look the same after all. Well, the difference actually lies deep within their fundamental physical properties. Comb comparing to the combustion engine, the electrical motor has a very linear chemical to kinetic energy transfer rate. Let me visualize this. I'm going to use a dyno graph as my visual aid. Okay. This graph demonstrates how does the power output of the engine variates with the speed of the engine, which is also as known as rotation per minute. Now, this graph belongs to the Honda Civic Type R, which is a um, petrol car, obviously. Now, this graph is produced by Tesla Model 3, which is Honda's electric counterpart. Yeah, this is... If we put them together, we can see that the petrol car produces an extremely irregular pattern, while the electric one is very linear. This linearity results the difference in behavior, and that difference in behavior will result in the difference in purpose. What it has really done is, the electric car has took away all the add-on values of the car. It is not made to please anyone anymore. That's right, no more Fast and Furious. It will only have one purpose only. It is made to take people from point A to point B, fast and fast and safe. That's right, Vin Diesel, Tesla just ended your career. If you can view EV as a simple transportation tool, everything will be made much more easier. Furthermore, I think we're demanding way too much from car companies at this stage. Commercial petrol cars has existed for more than 100 years while commercial electric cars has barely make 10. It is so unfair to compare these two. Also, the petrol engine has so much time to develop, and it is very developed. It is again unfair to compare such a thing to a newborn baby in the industry. You might have difficulty spotting the ridiculousness in this. Let me demonstrate, let me use this way. See, I am a decent badminton player. This is world badminton champion, Lin Dan. I am very sure that I cannot beat him. However, you know what else I'm sure about? I can easily beat his son. That is not because I'm too good or his son is too bad. That is only because at this stage, his son is four years old. <laughs> if we give his son a couple more years, he will squish me like a raw tomato. Well, that works the same for petrol and electric cars. Electric cars nowadays are not as good, not because they're bad in general or bad forever. That is only because they need more time. If we give all the time it needs, one day it will reach where we will need it to be. So, in, con in conclusion, petrol cars are just like a newborn baby that needs extra attention. It needs a little less criticism and a lot more patience just like any other regular baby, really. If we give all it needs, I believe one day we will see an electric era emerging from the horizon. Thank you.